I thought it would be prudent to discuss safety with muzzle loaders and black powder before we go out to the range to start our load development. With new shooters, I see two predominant attitudes about muzzle loaders and their safety. Uh, there's a group of people who seem to think muzzle loaders are toys and that normal safe gun handling rules don't apply. And, and there's another group of, of new shooters who seem to think that muzzle loaders are just a pipe bomb waiting to happen. Well, neither one of those things are true. And, and muzzle loaders and black powder are just as safe as, as you are. Now, of course you should follow the same safety rules that apply to modern guns with the muzzle loaders. For example, you know, treat every gun as if it's loaded. Don't let the muzzle point at anything you don't want to destroy. You know, keep your finger out of the trigger guard. All, all those gun rules that we've learned through handling modern firearms or going through um, hunter education courses, those apply to muzzle loaders. But there are additional safety concerns with black powder and muzzle loaders that don't apply to the modern firearms. And this is where some people get themselves into trouble. For example, never try to substitute smokeless powder for black powder in a muzzle loader. That's just not going to work. Those smokeless powders create pressures that are way beyond the capability of a, of a muzzle loading gun to contain safely. One of the most common infractions on safety is pouring powder directly from a container or a horn into the muzzle of the barrel. Don't, don't ever do this. Always put your powder into a powder measure and then pour that powder down the muzzle. In, in the instance that there might be a hot ember remaining in the bore of that gun, you won't ignite the entire container of powder by putting it in the measure first. Now the other thing that I see a lot of people not understanding or not following is to keep these powders, these containers of powder capped when you're shooting or unless you're actually pouring powder into your measure, that horn should be plugged and those containers of powder should be capped. Now here I have a few spouts that are self-opening and self-closing. They operate on gravity. When you tilt them, the spout opens and you can pour the powder into your powder measure. When you set the powder container down, the spout automatically closes itself. Now this one, I cobbled together using the spout I took off of a salad dressing bottle that was designed for vinegar and oil. This one I purchased and it operates the exact same way. You can also make a powder spout from a cartridge case. I used a rimmed 3030 case to make this one. I simply drilled the pocket primer out and drilled a hole through a metal cap from an empty container, but always cover it with another cartridge case or a cork or something to keep an ember from falling in to that spout. In this case, I believe this is a nine millimeter case that fits tightly over the neck of that spout. Now with your flask, you may have a spout on that flask that's designed to measure a particular charge weight. For example, this one, when opened and tipped over, will hold about 30 grains of 3F powder, but you still should not pour it from this flask spout down the muzzle. Always pour it into the powder measure and then pour that into the muzzle. If this were to ignite, there's a chance that the entire container could go up in flame. Now, all these containers for your powder are designed to be fragile. This is so they'll burst open before the pressures get to the point of causing an explosion. All these plastic bottles, even these little tin sheet metal cans that are soldered together, 
and the flask is made of thin metal. It has a seam that's either soldered or folded over in order to be airtight and moisture tight. These are designed to pop open should the powder inside catch flame and it'll, it'll burst open at a lower pressure so that an explosion isn't created. Now the powder horns, one of the most common errors I see people making is forgetting to put the plug back in after they've measured their powder charge. It seems unlikely, but an ember from firing the gun can find its way inside an unplugged powder horn and cause that powder horn to erupt. Now I'm going to show you a photo and an example in a moment of a gentleman who had a problem with his powder horn. And you'll see that when that powder horn went up in flame, it burst the powder horn open and it singed him and he suffered some burns, but he wasn't seriously injured. If you make your own powder horns or have someone make them for you, don't glue the butt plug into the horn. Seal it with beeswax to make it airtight and watertight and pin it with a few small pins. This horn is pinned with a few mesquite thorns. This buffalo horn is pinned with four little brass pins. Now, this would allow that horn to pop open and it, rather than explode should you happen to have an ember find its way into it. Now, the gentleman who had the issue with his powder horn going up in flame claims that the horn was plugged when that happened. He, he says that his horn was cracked or split and that he sealed it, he thought, securely with glue. And he assumes that that's how an ember found its way into the horn. But the, I, I've seen the video. I'm going to show you some photographs of this. But in the video, that horn goes off almost simultaneously at the same time he fires his flintlock. So these things can happen. And I don't want to see anyone become injured because they don't understand the safety concerns with black powder or because they've seen some people who are not practicing safe concerns. Um, Hickok 45 is absolutely the worst example of someone who never caps a powder container. Now, this gentleman, he may understand modern firearms very well, but every single time I have watched a video of him demonstrating a muzzle loader, he never closes or caps a powder container. The worst example I saw was a, a video he did demonstrating a double barrel muzzle loading shotgun. He has loose black powder contained in a wooden cigar box, and he never puts a lid on that box while he's shooting that shotgun right next to the bench. Now, he's been fortunate so far not to have an ember blow back and set off a large amount of powder that he left uncovered. But I, I don't want you to think that that's the way you should operate. Cover your powder containers after you fill your measure and never pour powder directly from your container down the muzzle of the barrel and you won't have any issues with a pound of powder going off in a big ball of flame. Now, while we're discussing safety with muzzle loaders, make sure that when you load that gun, you get that ball seated firmly down on the powder charge. If you get it part way down the barrel and fire that gun, it's the same as an obstruction in a modern gun. Now, this doesn't mean you have to beat that ball down on there with a hammer or bounce the ramrod off of it a dozen times. Mark your ramrod flush with the muzzle when you have your gun loaded and that'll be a good visual sign for you to see if that ball is seated all the way down on the powder charge or if built up powder fouling has prevented you from pushing it completely down. 
You don't have to put a lot of pressure on it, but for accuracy, you do want to practice applying the same amount of pressure on the ball against the powder charge. That can have an effect on the burn rate. And of course, if you pound it down hard enough to crush up the kernels, it's going to burn faster and you'll get inconsistent velocities. Now, another issue I see is a misfire. Always treat a misfire as a hang fire. For various reasons, that, that primer charge or that nipple flame, flame from the cap, can be slowed down by moisture or oil or fouling that's left into the bore. It finds its way into the powder channel. And we'll talk about how to avoid that when we get to the uh, section on reliability and cleaning. But sometimes those guns can fire after several seconds when you think it's a misfire. So if you have a misfire, keep the muzzle of the rifle pointed downrange in a safe direction for at least a minute before you try to address that misfire. Another safety issue that I've seen quite often at rendezvous with a new shooter or someone who has just purchased a used rifle that's new to them is the nipple that doesn't fit the threads of that gun. Some of them are very loose, so always make sure you have the correct size nipple and the correct thread pitch for that rifle and tighten it in snug. You don't want a loose nipple to become a projectile when you fire that gun. If you get a used rifle, have someone who is knowledgeable with muzzle loaders check it to be sure that it's in good condition to be fired. A lot of people tamper with the locks and the triggers. You want to make sure that the half cock notch is secure, that the hammer can't slip out of that. Uh, I know that sometimes people who shoot a, a gun strictly in match competition will actually remove the half cock notch from the tumbler in order to speed up their lock time. Um, you wouldn't want to just assume that a used gun you purchase has not had modifications to it. At times, the set triggers, which are designed to make a hair trigger, can be set so light that if you were to drop that firearm or bump it really hard, the hammer can fall without the trigger being pulled. That's an unsafe condition you want to check for. That hammer shouldn't drop unless you intentionally pull the trigger. And triggers can be very light, down into the three or four ounces, and still be safe, provided that the sear has not been tampered with or that the trigger is not completely out of adjustment. When you're using your wooden ramrod, Keep in mind that wooden ramrods can and will break eventually. This has a lot to do with the grain run out. Now, if you have a properly made hickory ramrod with straight grain, that's not so much of an issue. But in order to prevent a broken ramrod from piercing your hand, don't grasp that rod any higher than maybe four to six inches above the muzzle and push the load down the barrel in several short strokes rather than trying to shove it all the way down there at one stroke. While we're talking about ramrods, if you're going to do a lot of match shooting or even the amount of shooting that you're going to be doing, loading, developing the load for your gun, it's a good idea to go ahead and get a brass or a metal range rod for that use, something that's more durable, won't break, and put a brass or plastic muzzle guard on it to protect the crown on your rifle barrel. Now, one of the worst safety transgressions I see among some muzzle loaders is putting their face in front of the muzzle of the gun. Now, if you talk to people who do this, they'll give you all kinds of reasons that they blow down the barrel. Some of them claim oh, it extinguishes any embers that might be left in the barrel. Some of them claim that it keeps the fouling soft for they, so they can wipe it out easier. None of that is necessary. 
you can easily keep the fouling soft just by running a slightly damp patch down the muzzle. But, you know, spitting into the muzzle to soften fouling, looking down the muzzle to see if you forgot to put anything in there, blowing into the muzzle. These are just bad habits that can lead to a disaster. Don't put your face in front of the muzzle, please. It, it just shows a bad example and you're just waiting for something disastrous to happen. So I hope that you'll take these safety issues seriously. Black powder and muzzle loaders are very safe if handled properly. So keep all this in mind and stay away from those people that are not following safe practices with black powder. In our next video, I'm going to explain the load development procedures I use in order to discover the most accurate load in muzzle loading guns. I'll also cover the very different set of ballistic variables involved with muzzle loaders and how to isolate and test those variables in order to find the sweet spot for your particular gun. You may wish to subscribe to this channel in order not to miss the following videos. Also, let me refer you to the website at www.traditionalmuzzleloader.com where many of the topics we discuss in the videos are presented in the form of an article. Also, hit like if you would like to see a continuation of this series. Until the next time, Shoot straight and remember to keep your powder dry.